Welcome to Embodied Enlightenment, another feature of our free content, but also something that you can engage together with us. So, Embodied Enlightenment, what does it really mean? It's not talking about enlightenment, it's not talking about how we can change, it is embodying it, it's the praxis of it. The Greek word praxis always fascinated me more than practice because praxis means I'm flexible, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out how it works, I'm making adjustments. Praxis is for me alive. Practice sometimes by the meaning, this is a language man who is talking to you and if it doesn't resonate it's also good. Practice is more something I do rigidly. And it also has its purpose. But here I want to talk about the praxis of embodied enlightenment. And really enlightenment is not the status of the guru. It is not that sitting on the Himalaya and breathing in the nothingness. Enlightenment is something that is coming to all of us. And it is really about being with this planetary ascension and making more space for light. That's what it is. So we are living in very material worlds. Worlds, I'm using the plural now because it doesn't seem like everybody really lives in the same world. But we have a lot of material things. We have created a very material world. We civilized it, we developed it, we colonized it so it would be even more material and we wouldn't have so much access to spirit and to the light. So when we talk about enlightenment, we are emptying all this material things that we think we need and we allow more light in. But if we don't bring it within, if we don't integrate it, then it just becomes empty. So how do we really embody it's maybe one of the most important questions that we can have. Yes, you can meditate. Yes, you can do yoga. Yes, you can do whatever movement you like. Tai Chi, Qi Gong, or even digging the garden that I did over the last couple of days. It doesn't matter. As long as you open yourself up to the light and bring it in. And it's almost like you're planting seeds, sacred seeds of source within you. You allowing that shift that is really happening. You allowing more light to come in. You could meditate forever, you could do yoga forever, and yet you haven't embodied it. Does it mean that you're always quiet, that you're always empty within, that you always have the perfect experience? No, but it means you're allowing more light to come in. And what does it mean, more light to come in? It actually means to open up more. It doesn't mean to change another mindset. It actually means to open the mind. To allow more light to come in. Maybe allowing things that you can't explain. Just allowing it. So embodying is being it. Being it. Beaming it. Showing it in the world. Who am I? What do I stand for? How do I share what I stand for? without fuss and fight, without fear or freeze. How do I stand up? Yes, I believe it takes a lot of movement. It takes a lot of praxis, the breath and the movement, the meditation, the contemplation, whatever works for you. The being in nature, yes, you're making space for more light. And what happens when you have more light? Well, you are more easily shifting 
from the Homo sapiens to Homo luminous. The Homo sapien, funny enough, was of course the men and women of the mind, and hence the limitation of the mind as we have learned about it. When we get into a praxis of yoga, of meditation, of breath, there's many ways. We are getting out of the mind, at least for that time. And we are opening up to become these luminous selves. It also means that we become maybe more collective, that we let go of reason, that we let go of being right, of being true. True doesn't only mean it's right or wrong or good or bad. True means that you feel it in your heart. True means it helps everyone. No, it's not the universal truth as in ethics. It is a truth that just is, without reason, and even without explanation. In ethical development that Kohlberg and Gillian challenged, they say that most of us are in a second level of ethical development. We are trying to do good things that are expected, so we're getting rewards. But who is that person that is doing the good things and who said that these things are good? And the rewards that we are getting, is that really what we need or what we think that we want? Who is it for? As we're moving out of that, and this is my interpretation, and of course I'm with Gillian because it's not only for men, I feel it's the opposite. Women often have a much higher consciousness to be in a truth that is beyond themselves. And we are in ascension process. And it is important maybe that we learn what is the truth. That we learn what is the truth inside here. That we can actually listen. And we can actually come into that sacredness with this planet. We can bring so much light into our being that we can become one guardians and not owners, lovers and not destroyers. And for that we make space with our praxis. And for that I breathe, just allowing more light to come in. In one of the last books of Dr. Alberto Vialdo, The Heart of the Shaman, he talks about tea. And tea in Quechua is the source of light. Often in history, in anthropology, in whatever science, the connection to the Inca was misinterpreted as that they believed in the sun and the sun gods and all of that. But it was really talking about tea as in the source of light. So the source of light is really a very important connection to have. And you often see me writing, may T, the source of light, be with you. The source of light is what separated us, in a way, from our evolution. So the more space we make, the more opportunity we have, to come into grace. And grace is not a religious concept. Grace is simply these moments of bliss where you simply say, wow, this is it. 
this is what I could not dream about and yet I'm dreaming. These moments of light and bliss are the moments when you recognize whatever is happening here, it is working. In the midst of difficulty and pain, grief and whatever else comes your way, challenge. There are moments of bliss. There are moments of grace. And this is simply when you let the light in. So, this is my little embodied enlightenment for today. And maybe in your comments, let me know what you are doing to expand yourself, to let more light in, to become part of these new Homo Luminous, to be part of this planetary ascension, and maybe also to choose to put your light and your love in anything that you do. So looking forward to hearing from you, looking forward to sharing with you and hearing about your way to embody enlightenment and also to journey with you if you are looking for more light to be within you. For today, have fun in your world, enjoy the moments, bring more light. Do whatever it takes.